Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again, and welcome back to my channel. So, first of all, thank you very much for joining. I really appreciate many of you who joined the channel. And today I'm pretty excited, and I'm excited because a lot of you asked me about building one of the shaders that we created previously to an iOS device, to an iOS device that is running metal. So I have an iPhone X and I think it'll be a good exercise as we go through the process of building to an iOS device, seeing how some of those shaders that we created with Shader Graph will look like and how they perform. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna create a new branch so that we can have the basically the iOS version available through a branch. And then the master branch is gonna be the one for PC or Mac. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to convert this because I'm using a newer version of Unity. So I'm just going to open up Unity and the version that I'm going to be using is the 2018 3.10 F1. So that should be the latest version as of today. So let's go ahead and open it up. And then we'll convert, basically convert the project so that we have the newer version. I'll check that in. And then once we have that checked in, we'll create a new branch based on that. So the one that I'm going to focus on is the project that we created last time, which is the Unity LWRP Essentials. So I'm just going to open that up. And as I told you, this is saved with the 2018 3AF1, and we're going to upgrade it to 3.10F1. So I'm just going to say continue. And it looks like that is going to be converted. And let's see. So the goal for today is to go through and basically grab one of the shaders that we created last time, which were one was the vertex, vertex displacement. The other one was about a sphere with basically a line through the middle and with a bloom effect. So I want to show you at least how one of them could work on an iOS device running metal. So that's going to be our focus today. So let's go ahead and open shader one. And I'll show you the, so that's basically the one that we created the other day. And I think it will be cool if we do, let me look at this one. Let me just hit play and see which one this is. I think this one is the vertex displacement. And let's go to shader three. So that's the other one that we created and then shader four. So I think the one that I want to, that I want to work on is this one right here. Let me just go ahead and, and zoom in and Let's see, let me just expand the shader and I'm going to modify these properties, the time and speed, just a tiny bit so that we have, excellent, so that we have it a little, a little bit more detail to the shape. So I think that that works. And okay, so that this is the one that I'm going to be working on. So let's work on this one. So this one is a sphere underscore one on scene two. So we're just going to close out of Unity because we're going to focus on branching out of this. So this is a scene that we converted the project. So if I do a git diff on this file, you're gonna see that this is the project that got converted. And we went from 2018.3.8 F1 to 2018.3.10.F1. So we're gonna basically just check that in. And we're gonna say upgraded project to 2018. We can in fact just copy this and paste it there and push it. So after this, we should be update, updated. So now I'm gonna create a new branch. I'm just gonna say git checkout dash p to create a new branch. And this one is gonna be iOS. And I think that name looks fine. So just keep in mind that the iOS one is gonna be for all the changes that we're gonna be making for the iOS version. So now if we do get branch, you're going to see that we are on that branch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push that branch. So we'll do get push, push origin and then iOS. So we'll push it, we'll create a new branch. Okay, excellent. So now we can focus on Unity and then working on, on the session. So I'm just going to open the right version here. And we're going to open that project. And let's just give it a few seconds until it open up. Okay, excellent. So now we are on the branch that it's the iOS branch, so we can make any changes that we need to for iOS. So the first thing that I'm that I'm noticing here is if you haven't if you haven't done this, if you go to File and then Build Settings, make sure that you have iOS selected. If you haven't selected iOS, 
you might be on the PC, Mac, Linux, or standalone. So just to switch your selector and then just basically click on the switch platform. Once you do that, you should be here. And the next thing that I want you to do before we keep going is click on Add Open Scenes, because this is a scene that we're going to be building to iOS. So we're going to click on that, and you'll notice that it adds that scene as one of the scenes that are going to be built. Everything else looks fine. You're more than welcome to do development build if you want to debug it or, or you know get more information. So I think for us, this is completely fine, and I'm happy with that. The other thing that I need to do, let's go back to that, is go to Player Settings. Once we go to player settings, we're going to get this window right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap the scene to that side, and then we can focus on this. So because we're going to be creating a lot of prototypes in this, basically for this video and also for the next videos, just keep in mind if we're doing any iOS development, let's just change some of these parameters because as we're creating new builds that are going to go to our iPhones, we want to be able to basically run different applications at any time. So I always like to have basically one screen on my iPhone with all the different prototypes that I'm that I'm doing so that I can go back and forth and get different ideas and try different ideas. So we're going to do, on this one, it's going to be the LWRP. We can just name it that way for now. The company name, just put your company name in there. I'll put mine. The version on this, I always like to start on 1.000. And we don't need to set an icon. I like the Unity icon. That's fine. So the splash screen that we're going to get, we're just going to get the Unity splash screen, which is fine. We can just change the background color to be maybe a black color. If we hit preview, you can see. So we can do, we can have the splash screen for Unity just for our prototypes. That's OK. Then debugging, we don't need to do anything. Other settings, we do need to do some things in here. So as we're talking about metal, and that's one of the su subjects in this video, that's what iOS is going to be running on. And specifically, I'm running on an iOS on an iPhone X, which is running metal behind the scenes. So this is the graphics API that is going to be set by default. So we're going to leave that one. And we're going to leave everything else almost the same. The only thing that I need to change is we're going to change the bundle identifier. This is going to become the Dilma Games LWRP. And this is normally the reverse of your domain. So if your domain name is you know test.com, this is going to become that test and then the app name, which in which in our case is going to be LWRP. The version is going to be the 1.000. The bill, we can have it be the same. I'm going to have it, you know, be automatically signed. If you haven't set up a certificate and all that, you know, the provisioning profile, make sure that you watch the video that I'm going to put in the description so that you can go through that process, get that set up and also get this going on your phone. So if you're done that, then you can just continue on. So the scripting runtime, run I'm going to leave it at .NET 4.x. The 3.5 has been deprecated, so just make sure that you select the 4.x. And there's nothing in this project that requires, that won't run in 4.x. It's actually optimized for that version. And everything else should be the same. Just make sure that you have the device SDK. If you want to run this in the simulator, you can select Simulator SDK, which I don't recommend you do because it's it's really slow. Otherwise, let's do the device SDK so you can you can build it to your phone. This is going to be a, a basically a, an application that runs on the iPhone and also on iPad. So we're going to leave those two be that, and also the architecture. It's going to be universal. Okay, so I think everything looks fine. So now let's just focus on on maybe just making sure that this is centered correctly on the screen. So let's go to our camera and we're going to just basically just offset it a tiny bit. And it looks like we have multiple spheres in here. We can also or arrange that so that we can see it. So let's see where our camera. So our camera is right there. Let's see if I do. OK, perfect. So let's move the spheres a tiny bit. So that one is the one in the middle. This one is going to be, and in fact, we probably, let me look at this one. Let's actually make it bigger because it is it is way too small. Okay, so I'm just going to make it one, one, and one. And I think that's fine. Let's change the ch shader properties. There we go. It was actually a good size. It's just that the time, the time speed was just too low. Let's set this to 0.4. Let's go back to the scaling and set it back to 0.5. 
pain point five, excellent. And let's go now to Sphere 3. Do the same thing on the shader, let's do point three here. And let's make sure that we can see it through the camera. Looks like we are, we're just off a tiny bit. I can just put it right on this side and maybe around there. And point five works fine. If we go bigger, yeah, I think that that's fine. This one is further from the camera, so it's a little smaller. I think this one is too big. Maybe let's just offset it a tiny bit. Let's do 0.45. Yeah, I think that works. All the way across on X, Y, and Z. So now, before we run anything, let's go ahead and hit play. And we can see that things are starting to get... Okay, excellent. So I'm going to change some of these properties because I don't like the how slow it's looking. Let's do... There we go. That's what I'm looking for. And also the rotator, I'm not, I'm not really, I don't like how that looks. So I'm just going to, okay, I like, I like that it's steady, that it doesn't change there. So 0, 0, 0 on that one, it's fine. The other ones can move. So let's go to, so just remember that on this one, we have 0, 0, 0. If we stop the game from playing, it's going to go back to the default. So let's just change it to 0, 0, 0. Okay, excellent. Now let's hit play so we can modify the the shader properties on the other ones. That actually looks really cool. So now let's go to two. And on this one, and if you notice, we're using different shaders on this one. So on this one, we could change the color. So we have some, you know, something different to look for. And we can probably just do maybe like a red. The cool thing about shaders is when you make changes during runtime, they stay. But if you make changes to a script during runtime, they don't get saved. So just keep mind of that. I know that if I'm changing this one, I'm going to be okay. But if you change the other ones, you won't be. Okay, so we can do something like, something like that. And I don't like how the rotation works. I, I did that before, but maybe, maybe we had a little bit of a rotation, but not that much. I think Y on 10 is fine. We can... We can make that one a small, uh, basically slower on the time speed. And I like that. Because I really like to see how that looks on, on my iPhone. And you'll see that on your iPhone as well. Okay, so we're going to do on Y, we're going to do 10. So, which that one stays. So we can just do 0 on X and 0 on, on Z. Excellent. So now let's go and focus on the last one. Let's just hit play. And we'll see how that one I'm going to also, that one I want it to be very pointy. So the scale is going to be all the way up. The, the time, I'm going to make it really slow. How about that? And then the rotation again, let's just do 0, 0, 0. We'll have that one floating. So we can do, and then let's just change the color. We can do a blue. So it looks, it looks more like a Tron kind of style if you guys like that game excellent in that movie okay so that let's do something like that works okay and i don't like the rotation on on that one for some reason so let's just go ahead and let's make it a slower let's do 10 on the rotation on that one okay so we're just gonna go in and hit play 10 there oops on that one and then the last one it's gonna do zero 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 all the way across let's just hit play one more time before we build this to a device and I like how that looks I like how this one looks let's go into the post processing volume and the cool thing about creating a new branch is we can change anything we want and it won't affect the original basically the original scene in master so if we want to see how these look, you know, if they look really cool on iOS, let's actually make some changes so that we make sure that, you know, they look as cool as we can make them. And so I'm going to increase the ex the exposure there and the intensity of the bloom. I also want to increase it because that gives it a really cool look. Let's modify the, the threshold a tiny bit. Let's just make it, there we go. And on the post-processing effects, if you're changing these as well, these are basically files that are serialized. So if you make a change here, 
and you hit play, this, the changes are going to be already applied. So don't worry about remembering what the values are because they're going to be saved as we change them. And let's see, the clamp should be okay. The fusion could be could be changed. So if we wanted to be change the fusion a little bit, I think that that looks cool there. And the vignetting value. Let's see, we can go a little bit darker, but then let's go ahead and go into the color and just change the color a tiny bit. Awesome. So now let's go into the ground and, and modify the ground color. Let's see how that it's gonna affect it. So I think we have the the reason why I wanna make it lighter is because I wanna see the shadows. The shadows if you notice the shadows are really cool I want to see how those look in in metal so we're gonna basically light this up a little bit more but we can change the metallic value the smoothness a little bit so you get a little bit more of a gray color awesome so let's go into this one and let's just offset it a tiny bit so because if you notice the the iPhone X has basically round corners so I don't want it to get cut up so I think that's gonna work there. Now let's go into this one as well. Okay, we're actually gonna have to copy the transforms on a sphere three because if we hit play, we're gonna lose the offset. So let's just hit play, paste component values. Should have our value back there. Let's go into a sphere underscore two, offset it a tiny bit, and maybe. Uh, let's just put it right there. I think that I think that works perfectly. Cool. So I think I'm happy with the way that this scene looks like. So let's go into and look and see how it would look on the iPad. So if you notice, I have a lot of different options in here. I'm gonna use the latest ones. So for for instance, the iPhone X and the iPhone XR. So those are some of the ones that I want to that I want to test with. So if I look at the iPad. You can see how you know those ones look. I can see them completely, so that's that's perfect. Let's go back into the iPhone X XS, go back to portrait. And the other thing that I want to do is I don't want to run this on landscape, so let's go into file build settings. Let's make sure that we're not allowing that. So we're gonna go into resolution and presentation. And if you notice, I have different options in here. We also have auto rotation. So we can allow auto rotation, that's fine, because if we want to do a portrait or portrait upside down, we can allow those two. I'm just going to uncheck the landscape right and landscape left. And everything else looks good. All right, so I think I'm happy with this. So let's go ahead and, and look and see how we can build this to iOS, which is actually pretty, pretty easy. So we're going to go to File, Build Settings. And with everything that we already set up, we're just going to go ahead and hit Build. And I already built this scene. It was a different version of this scene, but it should have basically the same, some of the same files already compiled. So the reason why I did this is because it's gonna make it fast, faster to basically build. So I'm just gonna select the same name, hit save. And the reason why, like I said, I, I did that previously is because instead of doing a replace, which is gonna take longer, I'm gonna do an append. And append is just gonna say, okay, what files need to change? If files need to change, it's going to change them, and the files that don't need to change, it won't change them. So it'll make it faster. So I'm going to hit a pen. And we're just going to, it's just going to create a build for us and, and do what it needs to be able to compile the application. So it's just basically compiling the shaders, building the resource folder. Excellent. So, so the next thing that I'm going to do is, as this is running, is we're going to be building this to an iOS device. So I'm going to basically pause the video right here. This is going to complete, and then in a few seconds, you will be able to continue on in Xcode and look at how the application looks like. All right, guys, so it looks like the build completed. So I'm going to go ahead and open Unity-iPhone, and it'll open it up and then make sure that you click on unity-iphone in the project itself in Xcode. Then go to general and then go to targets and we're gonna look at a couple of things before we build it just to make sure that you have the settings correct. The display name comes from Unity so you should already have that set. Also the bundle identifier, the version and the build number should be already set. And if you don't have the signing piece working correctly or you have you know, an error that shows up. That means that you haven't set up your provisioning profiles correctly. 
So make sure that you follow the previous video, just like I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Then everything else should be just like the one that I have. I have the deployment target set to 9.0, device is universal, and also portrait and upside down are the only two options checked. So once you have that check, you should see your basically your device showing up in here. This is Delmar Vallecillo's iPhone, so that is my iPhone. Make sure that your device is unlocked. Once you have done that and verify that, let's just hit play to build it. And what this is going to do, this is just going to build it to my phone and create an icon and an application on one of my one of my screens. So we'll just wait for that process to complete. And I'll pause the video one more time so that you don't have to wait and then we'll continue on. All right, so it looks like the application installed on my iPhone and it's launching right now. So let's see how that looks. All right, let's see, running. Okay, looks like it's coming. And should be almost done. Okay, we now see the Unity logo. And let's see how the, oh, that looks beautiful. So you can kind of see how beautiful that looks on my on my iOS device. You can see the shadows are running, you know, really well. The the phone is, is basically rendering everything beautifully. And yeah, everything looks looks really well. I don't, really see and notice any performance degradation right now everything is really really smooth so so i think that that's good i think everything everything works i think i'm gonna basically wrap it up here and when i when i'm done with this video i'm gonna be checking it in and then pushing that branch so when you go into github and try to download this branch make sure that you're selecting the branch the ios branch and then hitting download and if you want to look at the other branch, just make sure that you select the master to look at the basically the PC and Mac version. So that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And also don't forget to check out my sponsor, which is GameDev.net. They have really, really good resources for game developers, resources for anybody that wants to start making games. They have a really amazing community amazing forums and also a lot of people that are very experienced in the field so check them out and also don't forget to subscribe and share this video and also check out my patreon which is really going to help me in creating videos like this and also improving my videos and also the workflow so thank you very much guys